Okay, this brings us to questions 9, 10, and 11, and we will start, of course, with question number 9. So let me blow that up a bit and move it over so that you can see it, and let's take a look at the question. Hmm, it says, according to current research, which of the following competencies best predicts a child's success in learning to read in the primary grades? Okay, this is a very skills-based model, so you want to go after something that's going to be related to skills that are related to skills in reading as they define them. And so, of course, logical and analytical abilities are going to not harm or hinder uh, a child's progress, but they're not concrete skills that they're looking for. The answer in this case is B. It is really letter knowledge and phonemic awareness. I already talked about phonemic awareness being a little bit more important than letter uh, knowledge. You need both, of course, but phonemic awareness edges it out just a little bit. But both of these are skills. Recognizing letters is a skill. Hearing sounds in the English language is a skill. Therefore, it's B. These are the foundations of reading right here. Very important for you to know and understand. Perceptual and motor skills. Well, perceptual skills, I guess those certainly are going to be important. Um, I'm not sure about motor skills. Uh, it's not really as related as certainly letter knowledge and phonemic awareness. Uh, conceptual knowledge and oral vocabulary, both are important. We know that, especially for getting at a word's meaning, as we discussed earlier. Uh, but these skills are not as important as the foundations, and that's why B is, uh, in fact, correct. Okay, another thing you need to brush up on apparently for this test is going to be English grammar. So break out your grammar book, review uh, English grammar before you take the test. Then they, in this case, want to know which one contains a relative clause. And in this case, the relative clause uh, that is correct in this case, it, it's A. And you can identify that based on that came to town in August. This is a relative clause because it's functioning like an adjective. That whole group of words right there is functioning as an adjective and it is describing circus. So clauses are typically going to contain maybe a verb and even a subject. You can treat that in a way as sort of a, a subject uh, in a sense, uh, but it's a, a relative uh, subject and that relative subject is really representing the circus and that came to town then is, like I said, an adjective clarifying uh, which circus because there are many, many circuses out there, I guess. After looking in the attic, this is wrong because it's not a relative clause, it's more of an introductory phrase. Uh, as the waiters walk toward the table, this right here is a subordinate clause. It's subordinate because I can't just say, as the waiter walked toward the table, dot, 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 I have to have an independent clause after it in order for that subordinate clause to have meaning. Uh, in D, we have the conjunction but right here, and but is balancing two independent clauses. In other words, two sentences that could stand by themselves, like they ran down the street makes sense by itself, they couldn't catch the ice cream truck makes sense by itself. Both then are independent, neither is relative, D then is out, C is out, B is out, A is correct. Okay, so if that made perfect sense to you, then your uh, grammar skills are probably up to snuff. Fantastic. Um, if you were baffled by that, then get your grammar book. Boy, did that sound uh, condescending. I'm sorry about that. Please get your grammar book. Okay, 11. 11 we have, in which of the following sentences is the underlying word used correctly? Well, the answer in this case is C. When I made that remark, I didn't mean to imply that you had caused a problem. So imply is used correctly in that case. And I don't want to you know, take up too much time with this because I'm sure you know this. When my supervisor spoke to me, she inferred that I'd better start showing up on time. No, you don't infer something like that. You would state it clearly. And so there's no inferred meaning in there. It's something that's uh, said indirectly. A statement like that would be said directly. What do you infer the sudden change in what? To what do you infer the sudden change in weather? That doesn't even sound right, so that's gone. I'm not sure it's possible to imply much of anything from this data. The imply is not used correctly. It should be infer, uh, in other words, to take meaning away from a group of data. And so, you know, the only thing that's correct in there is, is C. Okay, well, great. Um, let's go on to the next.